everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to check out one of these keychain mini GPS and location finder units. Alright everybody, thanks for joining me today. Um, I've seen these on Amazon for a while, and I've seen them on eBay for a while, and I kind of got to thinking about it and wondering if they're worth the 37 bucks they cost. So I picked one up. Now, when I say GPS unit, this isn't the traditional GPS you might be thinking of. It is a real GPS unit. I mean, there is a GPS unit in here. But this, as opposed to, we're used to GPS units with, you know, beautiful screens and topo maps and tracking, you know, and your little av av icon on there. This doesn't do that. What this does do is allow you to mark an area, say your base camp or a vehicle in a parking lot, and then find it later. And there is a guide on here. There's an arrow. You can, I don't know if you can see the the graphic that came with the card there. There's an arrow that will point you in the direction of where you need to go. This also will give you the ge geographic coordinates for where you are, velocity, altitude, a digital clock, and it features distance and mileage recording when you're busy walking or doing whatever you're doing. Now I've used this in my vehicle and I noticed something. The updates to it are a little bit slower than of course what you'd imagine for a regular GPS. It's not going to move the, the speed. It's not going to move in real time. Um, it might be, you know, it, I, it, it, to me it feels like it takes a survey of the last 30 seconds. It's like, okay, you were going about 7 miles an hour there. And all right, you're going about 5 now. Okay, you're going 15 now. You know, it's not a real time like we're used to with modern GPSs. But again, it's a smaller unit. And this is really for tracking your way back to a location. Um, I'm thinking something like this might be handy if you mark your point of interest as your bug out location. Um, if it's nearby, you know, like in my case, if, if, you know, if I had to go somewhere, it would be nearby in town. I would simply go there, mark my location, and it's set in here. So if I'm on foot and the area gets destroyed for some reason, and you know, that sounds kind of far-fetched, but then you look at the fires in California a couple years ago, where people didn't even know where they lived anymore. Everything had been flattened. There was no, you know, it was just Concrete slabs, no street signs, no fire hoses, no nothing. It was just burned to the ground. So uh, there was really no geographical reminders of where you might want to go. So for something like that, that's handy too. We are going to test it out. I'm going to pull the camera back a little bit and give you some operating instructions first. And of course, it's not going to pick up a GPS signal inside here. Um, it, it's really recommended for outdoor use. Again, it's a tiny unit. There's not a lot of room for an antenna. It does seem very well made. It does come with a charging cable. It does use the older USB plug, the non-standard, you know, it's not the mini USB. And it does come with a little lanyard for your keychain. I think what I'm gonna do is probably run something through there and maybe make that hole a little bit bigger and run some power cord through it eventually. I have played with it for the past few days and it's been pretty good. So let me back up the camera and uh, we'll turn it on and I'll show you how it works. All right, now in order to turn this on, you're gonna push this middle button here just going to push and hold it, and it'll turn on and say Mini GPS. I wish my camera would focus. Anyway, right now it's acquiring the signal. Um, there's no bars up there. It's bars like a cell phone kind of reading. There's no yardage. You will have to go into this and change it from kilometers and all that. Um, these are your menus down here. There's your miles, your uh, GPS coordinates, but of course they're not there yet because it hasn't synced up. And this is your miles per hour and how many feet you've traveled. That, that, no, how many, that's the elevation, how many feet up you are. There is a clock. You will have to set that in the beginning of what your time zone is. It's minus 7, minus 8, plus 4, whatever. You'll set that in the beginning. And here's your settings. So when you want to use your settings, you can push the up or down button to get to the settings. Then when you want to get the settings, you hit that middle button there. Now, there's the first thing you want to make sure. It's in English, if you speak English. <laughs> This is your backlight. I kept it on for 30 seconds. You can keep it on indefinitely if you're walking at night, um, or you can keep it as low as one minute. I mean, as low as ten, five seconds. There's your time zone. I'm minus seven here in Nevada. This is your unit of measure. Um, I just put mile. It will ask kilometer, whatever mile. Essentially, it's saying English or metric. <laughs> Whenever you see a unit of measurement that you feel you'd understand, click it. And there you are back to the beginning. So now we don't have a point of interest here yet because we don't have a GPS signal. But what I'm going to do with this is we're going to take it outside and test it. 
And uh, to get up to mark a point of interest, let's say this is where I want to be, and you see you have a GPS signal, and you're good there. We only have two bars right now. It does work okay inside, but for some reason not as well out here. In my house, it worked great. So when you're at your point of interest and you want to mark it, you can either hit these two buttons simultaneously or these two buttons simultaneously, and it will mark it there. See where that number one is? Let's put that light back on. That number one is empty, of course. It'll hold 16 points of interest, and you can set it for a hot start or a cold start. Now, a hot start, when you turn this off, there you go, you got full signal now. Um, a hot start will keep the GPS running in the background, but turn off all the other parts. So when you turn it back on, you don't have to wait for it to sync up as long. It takes about 30 seconds. A cold start is about two minutes, and that will turn everything off when you turn the unit off. So since we have a signal here, let's mark our point of interest. This is my little workstation here. So I'm going to push both. I hope I can do this on camera. There we go. See the date and time and all that information up top there? I really hope this is focusing. Yeah. Um, that is, I now have this area here marked as a point of interest. Now, I just have a little, um, you sort of see the yardage saying I'm moving. Um, I have a little uh, circle here. When you get an arrow, that's when you know that's pointing in the direction of where you're going to be leaving from. So I'm going to use my cell phone to film this because it's a little bit easier than using this big camera here to do it. And we're going to walk down the block a little bit and uh, see if it guides us back to where we need to go. All right, so we're outside. And it says to do about 250 meters to get a good start for an accurate reading. So we're just going to walk down. Whoa, focus down that way and then that way and see if we can uh, get this to work. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the light here. You'll see that arrow. That arrow is pointing back to the location that we marked. It's really hard for me to see it in the light. Let's see if I can turn the light on. There we go. Anyway, that is the arrow that we marked. That's pointing back to our direction of where we would come home to. So, let's keep on traveling. All right, so I'm about 51 yards from the front of my house, and I need to get better lighting on this somehow. Right over here. There you go. I don't know if you can see it from here. But there's the arrow pointing down, pointing back to where my house is. And there's the distance we've traveled, which is 58 yards. So I'm going to take a look at this video and see if you can actually see it. All right, so you see the arrow is pointing that way. Yep, I want to make sure it's still pointing that way. I can't see it on the monitor here on my phone, but it's clear as day in the video. At least you can see it. Now, here's the cool part. If you look up, there's my house where that big palm tree is in front. It's literally pointing to my house. So we're going to walk back with it. I'm going to try not to lose focus here and not get run over. <laughs> and we're going to see if it uh, shows us. When we get back there, it should have a circle saying we're back to our original destination. All right, so there's the arrow again. There's the arrow. There's the house. So it does seem to work, and it does seem to be working better today than it did yesterday. I noticed the, uh, the yardage and the speed was pretty much on. Um, let me zip through the settings here real quick. There's the coordinates, but I don't want to give you my coordinates out. <laughs> so you see we've gone, well, 0.1 mile. There's the elevation. It just switched again. There's the elevation of how high we are up here. There's the clock. You don't want the settings. And there we are, back again. So let me take it up to my driveway there and see if it gives me that circle saying I've arrived. And there's the circle. And we've gone. So we're about two yards from our actual place where we marked it. So it does work. You know, it's not the fastest thing in the world. I would keep this as a backup unit, um, as something maybe that you have for emergency if your main GPS goes out, or something for your kids if they're leaving a camp, or something for your bug out location if you're trying to uh, keep track of it and you need to get to it in a hurry. Handy little thing, 37 bucks. Really can't beat it. So let me get it back up on the counter over there and get back on my regular camera. And I'll give you my final thoughts on it and some information on it where you can pick it up. All right, so we're back inside. I'm done with my little point of interest there. And again, you know, from a security standpoint, um, I don't know that I'd mark my house in this and store it forever. Of course, I marked the house for the video. But I don't know that I'd mark it and store it forever. 
Um, this is something small that could fall off your keychain, you could lose it. You don't necessarily want people having directions to your front door. But this does work in a vehicle as well. I tried it yesterday while driving around and it took me back home, although it tried to take me over like a golf course in a field and so it is the most direct route. You can't set this for no freeways, uh, no dirt roads. It, it's the most direct route. So it's definitely better suited for a um, rural um, camp out type situation. Um, even getting to a bug out location on foot, I would definitely say this is something I would keep for on foot. If you have an ATV, okay, and you off road or a dirt bike or something, this is kind of handy to have. Be a definite handy little thing to have um, in your uh, in your uh, emergency kit. You notice there it's got the the arrow again, and it does see it fluctuates a little bit once we get inside because it's not as accurate when it's inside. So it's saying I'm 11 yards from my 10 yards eight. There we go. It's dropping a little bit. And the circle is there now saying we're, we're, where we originally marked it. But it is fluctuating a little bit while we're inside. The signal isn't as good. It's really designed to work outdoors in an open area. When I was outside walking with it, um, it, it was dead on. I mean, it was literally telling me I was walking 1.4 miles an hour and everything. It was really accurate. And even the arrow, which yesterday was a little laggy for me, you know, when I purposely started walking the wrong way, and it was still pointing that way, and I was walking, say, this way. It again pointed and said, hey, you're going the wrong way. You know, so it was laggy. Today it was really quick and went straight over. So again, it's not something, you know, I would say is the be-all, end-all of GPSs. But it is another handy thing in your toolkit. And for 37 bucks to have an extra thing you can mark with, you know, you can mark spots and territory with, that's really handy. I can think about me using it. Um, when I go out to shoot, sometimes I go into areas that are legal to shoot, but not standard designated kind of everybody talks about where they go shooting areas so this is handy for me I can sit here and mark it and remember where that area is um, generally I remember that stuff but you know if, if you're going somewhere where you're going to be far away it's kind of handy to have so um, the few times I've tested it both in the vehicle and with you today and out walking yesterday it seems to work very well and it's 37 bucks I'll give you a link on Amazon can't really go wrong for something that inexpensive that can um, possibly get you out of a jam and it's kind of like leaving a little digital breadcrumb trail behind you. So it's uh, definitely handy. As I said, it comes with the, the little thing here. This is kind of cheap. I'd probably just, what I'm probably going to do is take a file and make that hole a little bit bigger and run some paracord through it, make like a little lanyard type thing. And it comes with a charger and it does not use a standard USB plug. It uses the older big USB plugs. So definitely a cool little item and it seems to work very well. The charge runs about, I believe they say four days um, on, uh, you know, in standby, on off mode if it's fast. If you have it set to hot start, it'll last for four days because essentially GPS is continually running. If you set it to cold start, of course, it's good forever. And they said up to um, nine hours um, of runtime just as a GPS, like it is on here right now running. Um, I would conserve a little bit of the battery. And turn the lamp off in the settings, you know, maybe to 10 seconds like I have it here. I think I had it for 30 seconds. But still, I would do that, you know, if you're going to be uh, out walking around. And again, this is where having a little portable solar panel comes in handy. Because this can be recharged right there with a little portable solar panel. So anyway, that is the little Keychain Mini GPS. This is made by a company called Winter Worm. But a billion companies make these. Um, it's the PG-03. That's the unit name. And almost all of them are green. Some of them are yellow or blue. You really can't miss them. They're all over Amazon. And it's a pretty darn good deal for what you're getting. You know, you got to remember, this isn't going to help you avoid traffic on the highway. This isn't going to show you a map of your entire city. This is, has a specific reason. It's more another, it's really another tool in your toolkit. It's not the whole thing. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. I will put a link down below where you can pick one of these up. I think they're kind of cool. You know, if you're, if you're a gadget head like me, you love this stuff. But it's not always practical when you're a gadget head and a survivalist. But I think in some applications, something like this has a place. So I will put a link, like I said, down below. You can click that link, check it out. It's also in my Amazon store. Don't forget to check out my Amazon store. Um, if there's nothing in there you like, just shop as you normally would. It really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost anything extra. And don't forget to check out our Olight link down below. We have a flash sale coming up pretty soon, so I want you to check that out and get registered on the site. Lots of times, if you're registered on the site already, you get free stuff or you get better deals. So go ahead and register. Get ready for it. It's coming up in a few days. I'm going to do a video on it, so definitely check that out. And don't forget to check out our Thrive Life Store down below if you're interested in getting started on some freeze-dried food storage. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Stay safe, 
and stay prepared.